I'm officially back from my first ever solo travel experience to Paris and as promised today we're gonna sit down and talk about all of the tips and anything from my experience that would be helpful for you guys because I know a lot of you mentioned that you're also interested in going on solo travel trips as well so if you follow me over on Instagram you can see the highlight that I saved over on my stories with all of my daily activities that I was doing over in Paris and I also created daily recaps on my reels so if you're interested to know about Paris specifically go ahead over there I also shared my favorite locations that I I went to each day so go check that out if you're interested going through the questions that you guys sent there were a lot of similar questions so I think I'm just gonna do it kind of by chunk and I guess to give you some backstory first I planned this trip pretty impulsively I would say I have been wanting to go to Paris for so long I actually have been there before when I was 16 I went for my birthday but it was very brief very quick and I was with family so now that I wanted to go again I booked the trip kind of on a whim if we're being honest and when it came down to it nobody that I would travel with could go with me at the time so I figured I really want to go I'm gonna go to Paris. So I booked my Airbnb and it was very much just let's go ahead and do it. I didn't really overthink it, which I'm glad I didn't because I think that would have stressed me out a little bit. But that's how I ended up going to Paris by myself. It wasn't even originally a solo travel plan. I knew I wanted to go and then it just ended up that I was going by myself. And I was fine with that because I figured that's just gonna be a life experience regardless. And let me tell you, it was the best decision Ever. It was hands down the best week of my life and we're gonna get into that But first let me answer your questions So the question that probably came up the most often is tips for staying safe when you're traveling by yourself And that was probably the biggest thing that I was thinking about going into the trip as well because I want to of course enjoy the experience but be safe while doing that. So some general things that helped me feel really safe while traveling, especially by myself. So one, I did pack pepper gel with me, not pepper spray, pepper gel, because pepper gel, if you ever need it, it's easier to direct than pepper spray, which could potentially blow back on you. So I brought that with me just for more peace of mind. And I always had it with me in my pocket whenever I was out of my Airbnb. And also regardless of where you're staying, whether it's a hotel, Airbnb, there is a little thing you can get on Amazon. I'll insert a picture here, but you stick it in your door and it keeps it closed even if someone is trying to get in. I'm probably not explaining that very well but Amazon breaks it down pretty clearly. But anyway it's really easy to travel with. It fits right in your suitcase or your purse and that's another thing that just gave me a little bit more peace of mind especially sleeping. I also always carried around with me a little juice charger. What is it called? A power bank. A little power bank to charge your phone on the go so my phone would never die on me while I was out and about. That's another thing that I got from Amazon which is so so worth it. Even when I'm not traveling that comes in handy so much more often than you would think so I carried that another thing that's pretty small that just fits in your purse and it's really easy to bring with you speaking of purses the bag I did bring with me that I knew I was gonna have with me every day when I was out and about I specifically chose it because it had a zipper closure so you can just feel a little bit more safe with your belongings right in front of you and I always had my purse in front of me it was a crossbody so then that way I always knew where my belongings were especially if you're on the metro or something or honestly just walking around just having that extra sense of security of being able to see whatever valuables you have on you at all times. Another little trick that I found really helpful was my phone. I never actually had my phone in my purse. I wore leggings that had pockets on the side so I could just stick my phone right in that pocket and my phone was literally touching my thigh the entire time. So I always knew where it was and I felt just better having it on my body because then if for whatever reason my purse got lost or something, I always had my phone because it was on me. So those are the basic safety measures I took and of course when it comes to walking around at night just always being aware of your surroundings even in the daytime just making sure you're not walking in with both airpods in or something just so you know who's around you what's going on around you especially somewhere that you've never been before so be aware of your surroundings and keep your phone charged so you can always pull up a map just in case one last little point i would say about safety in general when you're on your own is just listen to your gut if you have a bad feeling about wherever you are the people you're with whatever that may be just reroute and go somewhere else because it's better safe than sorry. So that's pretty much it for the safety aspect of it. I did, like I said, have those measures that I took, but I didn't want the sole focus of my trip being me looking over my shoulder paranoid the entire time. So I didn't do that, but I did take those certain steps to make sure that I felt safe the entire time. And I really did. I felt totally comfortable the entire time in Paris and I was walking around the streets past like 10 30 at night which is saying a lot because like I said this was my first time ever being truly truly by myself while traveling so I was in a totally foreign country by myself but I felt extremely safe so for anyone considering a solo trip Paris is definitely one of my top recommendations honestly best 
best week of my life. I'm always going to remember it as that. So next questions that you guys asked my favorite part about solo traveling so i honestly going into it i didn't know if i was going to get bored i guess you would say because i'm always used to having someone to share experiences with so i didn't know how it was going to be but it was amazing to not have to worry about what anybody else wanted and just every single step of the way it was what did i want to do what did i want to go see what do i feel like eating and i think just having that intentional selfishness is really fun especially in a time like this in my life i'm not married i don't have kids or anything so for me i was very much in the mindset of why not you know just live life live it to the fullest and do whatever you want to do so that's exactly what i did and the trip was amazing because of that so i think traveling by yourself it just lets you have that total you time if that makes sense it's whatever you make it to be so i think that is what i really really valued from the trip and just making it totally my own and totally my own experience going into it too i didn't really put together an itinerary if you will there were some spots that i knew i wanted to go to so i had that in my mind but i didn't really put together an itinerary because i really wanted to just take each day as it came and just intuitively go wherever I wanted to go and see whatever I wanted to see. I actually ended up walking a lot. So the metro system is really good and we'll get into that but the first few days especially I was walking and I didn't even I wasn't even consciously doing this but I would check my apple watch at the end of the day and day one I had walked 14 miles by accident and I say by accident because I was just literally going around exploring and by the time I got back to my place that is how far I had walked but it didn't even feel like that. So I didn't have any hard schedules for myself because I wanted it to just be a vacation. So I walked around a ton which make sure if you go to Paris especially do not bring any cute looking shoes that are uncomfortable stick to comfort because it will ruin your trip if you have blisters and you're hobbling around the streets like a little old lady but I did also go on the metro quite a bit especially I think it was by day three my feet were dying so and I had comfortable shoes on so I did end up taking the metro quite a bit and it was super easy the first time I got on it I did end up <laughs> at the wrong spot but that was purely my fault I looked at the wrong name. I was going in the wrong. I went to the wrong spot, but it was on me. But the metro is actually super, super easy. And using Google Maps too in conjunction, if you pull up Google Maps, it tells you exactly which line to get on and which direction you should be going on. So that's the biggest thing, making sure that you are going towards the right destination. But other than that, the metro is very self-explanatory. The first thing you're gonna wanna do when you get there is get a metro card, which you can get in any of the metro stations. And then I went ahead and filled it with 10 tickets. So you can do that instead of paying for each time you wanna use the metro, because I knew I was gonna be using it quite a few times. So I filled the card and then it's just super easy. Of course, don't lose the card, but anytime you need to hop on the train, you just pull out your card, swipe, and you're good to go. So public transportation was extremely easy. Even getting Heading to and from the airport there is a bus that takes you directly into the main part of Paris and that was easy to find getting out of the airport there's signs everywhere for the bus and everything is super clean too I think that's the biggest <laughs> difference as well especially comparing it to New York public transportation it's night and day in terms of cleanliness it was very clean and just visually appealing so transportation was a breeze and very easy to figure out and this is coming from someone who rarely takes public transportation in general so I was pretty much starting from scratch figuring things out and I was able to do it really quickly but overall my tips in terms of transportation and stuff bring comfy shoes and when you get a metro card go ahead and fill it with the 10 tickets I think there's an option for 10 tickets or 20 either way don't just get one because you're probably going to use the metro more than once did I know anyone in Paris no I don't know anyone who lives in Paris and again this whole trip was just a total me trip so I didn't have any plans really to interact with people I did meet people there that but the whole point of the trip was pretty much to just hang out with myself and that's exactly what I did do you know French and if not was the language barrier problematic I am lucky enough that I did study French in high school and all of college it was part of my major so I definitely had a comfortable footing going into it in terms of the language I wouldn't say I was like a thousand percent confident in my speaking but you definitely the more time you spend there you adapt pretty quickly so I was able to get by speaking French the entire time and if you don't know French I would highly recommend learning at least the basics before you go because you can't just go to a different country and expect people to speak your language there are a lot of people in france that do speak english i also think it's just kind of a manners thing to go in at least 
trying to speak French if you're in France and more often than not if you are struggling with it they will respond in English because they will quickly tell that you're American so short answer yes I would say make sure if you're going to France learn some French but there are also apps that can help you out there is the translate app that comes directly on iPhones I think this was just automatically on my phone pretty much this app you can speak into it you can hold the mic and speak whatever you're saying and then it translates it makes it really easy if you run into that problem but just brush up on it at least the basics. That's also helpful too if you ever get lost or something. If your phone does die, you need to be able to survive and get back to wherever you're staying. So that was my mindset as well. I also felt a bit safer in knowing that if it came down to it, I could communicate and not have the language barrier be a huge, huge problem. Best places I visited. Ugh, that is so hard to narrow down to a few because I saw a lot of places. I went to a lot of different places because I wanted to be very intentional about seeing anything and everything. But I will say I did save all of my favorite spots from each day over on my reels on Instagram because I posted each day a recap of what I did that day. So if you want to see firsthand the places that I went to that I really loved, go head over to my Instagram. But off the bat, obviously I did go to the Eiffel Tower, very touristy, but I went at night and it was amazing. I also ended up just hopping on this cruise ship, which I think is technically a barge, but it was this really pretty lit up boat. What are we going to call it? Let's call it the cruise ship. So I just ended up going on because I was like, I'm here. I want to do it. Why not? So I got on and it ended up being this tour of all of the major landmarks that are along the river, La Cienne. So it was really cool getting to see all of those spots from a different perspective, literally coming from the river. I went to some really cool lookout spots and that was amazing because you get to see the entire view of the city. And again, those are saved over on Instagram. But I would say overall, my favorite part of it was just going wherever I wanted, whenever I wanted and seeing everything. To be honest, I think a big part of the reason that this trip was as amazing as it was is because I didn't overthink it. It was very much just enjoy it. So I think overall anyone who is even mildly considering going on a solo travel trip, definitely do it. It's honest, it's hard to put into words how amazing it was because it was just one of those things that it's an experience that will be totally yours forever. I know this sounds kind of cheesy, but really it was pretty life-changing to just be alone with yourself for that amount of time and just experience all these new things, immerse yourself in a totally different culture. And there were so many different reasons that I could have delayed or canceled the trip or just chickened out and not gone. And to be honest, I almost did because I was freaking out trying to find an Airbnb literally days before my flight. I guess actually quickly circling back to safety tips, make sure you read all of the reviews before you pick an Airbnb. I also was only looking at Airbnbs that had a good chunk of reviews, so I could be pretty confident in my decision there. And the reason I did go with an Airbnb versus a hotel is because I figured it would feel a little bit more like I lived there for the short time that I was there versus a hotel, just you're in a hotel. So I also got really lucky with my Airbnb. I loved it. It was so amazing and the location was really great. That was another thing to look for or for me personally I knew I was going to be doing a lot of walking so I needed to make sure that wherever I stayed was in a walkable location and I knew it was going to be safe at night. I was especially looking at reviews from people who had also traveled by themselves to see how they felt but when I travel alone again I definitely will do an Airbnb again as well because I had a great experience. Okay I feel like this got rambly but there's so much to talk about and I want to give you guys all the good information. I also did get several messages saying that you guys are interested in solo traveling, but you're nervous to do it. I was nervous as well, but just do it. Trust me, just do it. You will not regret it at all. And going into it, I also told myself, you're gonna either love this or hate it, and you're gonna know which one it is pretty quickly. And I think everybody can benefit from having just quality alone time with themselves and learning how to enjoy their own company and just be happy alone. So I am really happy that I took this trip, I feel like I got to spend quality time with myself, which I highly, highly, highly encourage anyone who can to take a solo travel trip and just have that experience. Especially if you're like me, if you're in your 20s, if you're in that point of your life where you don't have any hard obligations keeping you in one spot, go see the world, go travel, have those amazing experiences. Now that I've had this experience, I have such a list of places I want to go to and I will be going to because why not? Live life, make 
it happen whatever you want to do go do it and life is just so much better when you just intentionally go after the things that make you happy and that sentence pretty much captures my trip in a nutshell so if there was anything that you feel like I didn't cover in this video if you have any other questions feel free to go ahead and leave them in the comment section I'll be answering them there and like I said if you want to see in depth the things that I did in Paris then head over to my Instagram I also captured the outfits that I wore each day over on TikTok so you can head over to both of those if you want to see more but I will definitely keep you guys posted on my next travel experiences because there are going to be lots of them thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video <laughs>